Hello, good evening. Thank you, good evening. I'm glad you're enjoying my life. Thank you so much. Hello, good evening. Sorry for the delay, guys. I mean, we need to wait for Dr. Aruna just for just for a minute. She'll join us shortly. before today we are doing an interesting talk about how to combat uh, addiction how to fight dependence be it drug or any habit anything that is habit forming um, we have dr aruna with us she is a rehabilitation specialist she is one of my teachers so i think it'll be pretty interesting Hi, ma'am. Hi, hi. Uh, perfect. Last... You can see me and hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's very really new to me. Yeah. That's the problem. No problem, ma'am. No problem. I mean, uh, we're not that late. I restarted anyways. Uh, ma'am, welcome. So, so happy to see you after a long time. I think last time I met you was in Kolkata. It's a time when we learn from our students, I think, how to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my daughter is behind you. Don't know the basics and all those things. I got to hear from her right now. <laughs> so I was telling everybody, ma'am, uh, that I'm doing live with my teacher today, and I'm very excited about it. Also slightly nervous, and I still remember our rounds in Velankini Ward. So for people who don't know what is Velankini Ward, Velankini Ward is. uh de addiction uh, center which is part of uh, father mulla medical college that i went to so ma'am was in charge of uh, uh, ma'am is still the in charge of the de addiction center so whatever we learned about de addiction is through uh, aruna ma'am and also having aruna ma'am in the rounds used to be so happy for all the pgs she is the most chill professor that you will have and she'll teach you at the same time she'll make sure you do the work she is quick efficient she comes and she makes sure work is done and then she leaves it amazing i learned quite a bit from you ma'am uh ma'am can you can you see me 
Yeah, yeah, I can see. I can see you yes. like celebrate then. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um ma'am, so I'm doing this mini series about addictions. I have finished a talk about what is addiction exactly and I talk about what are the effects of alcohol on the body. Now I want to talk about how to combat addiction because a lot of yeah. people don't know relapse is a very big thing in addiction ma'am what is relapse for people for people who don't understand what is relapse uh, relapse is uh, once they decide to quit and uh, once uh, is speaking in layman terms let's not hmm. get into psychological jargon here uh, yeah. people have already decided to quit and they have been quite successful for some time in quitting the thing also and hmm. it might Uh, not just alcohol or uh, you know hard drugs or uh, tobacco for that matter even behavior patterns when they decide to quit and for some time they have been abstinent say for a small period of like 3 months 6 months then again they restart the use and if that pattern of use goes back to the previous pattern of use like the dependence pattern where they were going we call that a relapse and as you said uh, those people who are trying to quit it's a big thing for them it's not only a big thing for them it's a big thing for the family also because that is that relapse part tends to frustrate people they tend to give up telling that you know a dog's tail is always bent it will never become straight once a addict always a addict so they even say you know you can leave alcohol alcohol won't leave you all these kind of things and myths are propagated in uh, lay people and so it becomes very hard for them to digest that relapse also is uh, uh, you know it can happen and uh, what we need to understand here is as you said uh, relapse is not a, a, a part of failure on the uh, person or the individual who's trying to quit and it is not treatment failure also see when we were uh, running the de addiction center in father mullers uh, the success rate is something like 60% and that is a very good percentage for yeah. de addiction and that is if you treat 100% for 100 people for addiction Sixty uh, percent don't relapse, and forty uh, uh, people will relapse within the six months. That is the study mm. usually takes a six-month year course or you no know, six months to a year course, and uh, that might be very astonishing for people where they tell that forty people are relapsing, and you are telling it's a great success. Uh, actually, if you take the success rate, that is a great success because that relapse part, what we see, it's not a part of treatment failure at all, or it is not a failure on the part of the individual. It is. it is to be taken as a, a part of the disease process as such so once they are getting into addiction relapse can be happen and you may say that that is very unfair for people who are going into addiction or why relapse should happen it shouldn't happen if you have treated properly or if you are strong willed and all uh, i give the analogy to physical disorders also in this matter it is not only psychiatric disorders that have a relapse or they have to be uh, you know stigmatized for that that you know you don't have to treat because anyhow they are going to relapse so why treat uh, tb can relapse cancer can relapse diabetes people if they don't keep a control over their diet in spite of the best insulin they are getting and the best physician care they can relapse hypertension can relapse so if you take this analogy with physical disorders like medical disorders chronic disorders the same thing happens with uh, almost all disorders if you see like you know uh, maybe those people who are trying to maintain a healthy weight Uh, if you start uh, eating again your pastries and buns and everything you tend to gain weight faster than what you had gained earlier so it is the same thing if you see for every behavior uh, the addiction also takes on a same route so relapse is a part of the disease process this is what they have to understand and once they understand relapse they will not get frustrated but they will make up the mind to beat it once again and give it a try once more so that is what i feel the, the myth lies in treating relapse as a treatment failure or as an individual failure or a will power failure as you call it but it is not that but it is a part of the disease process right right ma'am that's well said ma'am uh, for the 40 person who are relapsing what are the general factors ma'am like uh one is uh, these people who do get relapse there are uh, something called trigger factors which will lead to relapse and when we say about trigger factors it's very individual uh, for each person it might be very different so they say that uh, being aware of what triggers you towards a relapse that is very important for those patients so whoever comes with a relapse or whoever uh, family comes with a patient who has relapsed i tell them that to look into the factors that caused relapse actually and 
uh, it includes all factors even you know physical factors emotional factors uh, psychological factors all these things what i have seen usually is you know uh, uh, the mental states that they go through maybe you know negative emotional states maybe they are under stress for some uh, uh, stressful life event has happened in their life or you know uh, there is extreme sadness or they have uh, had a failure in some other uh, event you know they have gone for a football match and they were supposed to win but they lost and that itself might uh, be a trigger to take a drink and you know um, uh, you know uh, uh, dissolve all follows or you know become uh, they try to find alcohol as a solution for all that and the opposite of it is also true there are so many times when a positive mental state has also stimulated relapse like uh, they have a celebratory mood they have won something and uh, they tend to feel that you know why not uh, this is uh, if i don't open a champagne bottle now then when so i have waited this long for this so let me this so that itself might lead to a relapse later on and for some people it is the peer group or the pressure what uh, happens they are meeting friends after a long time getting into the same group of friends which they were so even this may cause relapse or uh, trigger factors kind of thing for some people the trigger factor might be something very trivial also passing through a bar or seeing a neon sign or uh, seeing a movie where there is a neon sign or uh, remembering the old times nostalgic moments like attending a reunion or something or meeting up with a old friend where they rake up issues like you know we used to get drunk and have so much fun these kind of things might even trigger some uh, 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 nostalgic memories which will push them towards alcohol also and as i said earlier not only that even physical disorder sometime when they are in very uh, a great pain or they are under chronic stress due to health factors itself uh, these kind of movements can also uh, push them into a relapse uh, kind of situation and uh, i have seen many uh, people who quit uh, uh, tobacco or cigarette with great difficulty only to restart it again telling that i have been gaining weight my body has lost shape when i was smoking i used to maintain a good body weight so why not smoke again and get back to this Uh, i think this is more important than that so that those kind of things also have happened uh, regularly and uh, there are many varied factors for relapse and these are the few common commonest ones what we come across where they tend to go into this mainly if they are very stressed during that this it may be a positive stress or it may be a negative stress but uh, that is when they usually relapse I must still remember one of your classes right in velankini boy we were doing rounds i think it's just you and me you asked me i didn't understand kannada so you were t- you asked you spoke to the patient and you asked me to interpret what caused relapse in this patient i tried telling you all big big factors that and this in the textbook you said no his child has a, a like birthday so i asked you oh so they served alcohol in the birthday party you said no they uh, served samosa uh, to the guests in a paper plate which has which is made about made of kingfisher uh, like a like a poster he saw that right after the party he went to the bar and he got drunk so you said visual cue is that important i still remember that i, I still tell my patients like this happened you know it's uh, even even something as simple as that or smelling alcohol in even in a normal restaurant when someone else is drinking is also important i mean i remember that this is one example i always remember you when i'm <laughs> teaching my patients <laughs> i even tell my patients not to cross the same bar which they yeah. have been you know yeah. the cross the same street uh, standing at a traffic signal where the neon lights are on all these yeah. kind of things also causes relapse and they say that just seeing that neon light i decided that i have to have a drink today so you know uh, these kind of visual cues also will lead to a lot of uh, this and that is why people who are lobbying uh, against alcohol they say that we shouldn't be glamorizing these things in movies like you see if uh, amir khan sits with his two of his friends and starts drinking and having a nice time and having a hilarious kind of a time it might trigger in some people you know yes i was having a good time when i was having alcohol so let's revisit those times so uh, alcohol acts as a social catalyst also many a times so th- uh, that leads one leads to the other and uh, they forget the medical part of it and get into addiction pattern very easily Ma'am, how big of a role does family plays in either having a relapse or preventing a relapse? Um, uh, I would say a very big role uh, when, especially when it comes to Indian settings. See, when yeah. we take 
western literature we don't have the role of family as such because there the concept is like you know you are on your own uh, after a certain age and uh, uh, that much of family bonding or what we call here interference is not there uh, uh, in western society but here if you see uh, rather than the state taking care of your uh, health or this uh, it is a family which actually uh, stands behind you in every uh, uh, behind every patient it's at least 80 to 90% of my patients are taken care of by their families and uh, when this relapse happens it's a very frustrating moment for the uh, caregiver also for the family member also and they feel very frustrated because uh, as i said earlier the state is not taking care so it is usually out of pocket expenditure for the patient's party and uh, the patient is already non productive due to alcohol use or he's been deteriorating in his work uh, uh, this work performance and everything and in spite of that in addition to that uh, they the family members need to spend a lot on his uh, uh, you know detoxification procedure or hospitalization and all even though they go for subsidized uh, treatment care centers it amounts to a lot of uh, money for a lot of people so it is not affordable to everybody and when they uh, spend a certain amount of money they expect results and when i say that you know 40% of the people will relapse it's a huge blow to them that uh, uh, you know you have to start the treatment from your back to square one and you have to start the treatment again from square one so it is like uh, you pull the elastic rubber band to such a great extent and it goes and uh, bangs again to the same place so it becomes very frustrating for family members and it becomes very difficult for us to explain also why these things are happening so a general awareness about relapse Uh, at the start of the treatment itself education not only to the patient but also the family members and if family members are not supportive if they are very uh, critical or you know uh, expressed emotions or more where they are critical or expecting a new leaf kind of change from the patient uh, as soon as he gets out of the rehab center or as soon as he quits that is not going to happen change is going to happen in that person but it is going to happen very gradually so when family members don't know this they expect him to turn over a new leaf suddenly by you know by one consultation or by one counseling or one one treatment or uh, 13 day stay in the rehab center but when that doesn't happen they are very critical about it you will never change. Uh, you were always a uh, you know rotten banana because of you other people are suffering these kind of negative comments will again push them into a state where they will you know they uh, get back into that same pattern of uh, drinking or smoking and uh, their self esteem and their self confidence in restraining from all this also goes down so yeah. family goal is very important in these things because uh that is where uh, you know they are totally dependent on the caregivers and family members especially in indian settings especially in south indian settings i have seen that family plays a very huge role in uh, maintaining abstinence or sobriety for the patient right and somebody just asked a question if uh, they're getting their son married who had uh, alcohol dependence and obviously treated now off alcohol should they inform the girl's family or the girl about his habit uh ideally speaking every relationship is based on something called trust so yeah. if you uh, if you ask me a personal opinion i would definitely say yes you would uh, you would definitely have to mention that he was into substance abuse but uh, he's been had family support and he is the first thing is he is willing to change that thing has to be uh, told to the uh, girl's family also because uh, these things uh, the more you hide and the more uh, you go forward with these things uh, later on it will come with a boomerang and it will seem shady why didn't they tell me first uh, so it is better to take them into confidence and tell them uh, that you know uh, this this is this was a disorder he had and we got him treated promise to stay abstinent to the best of his level and many times what happens is family members can't tell it uh, it is not like uh, they won't tell it but when they tell it they tell it in a very wrong way uh, probably they say that they addicted to alcohol uh, those kind of things and that has a, some bit of uh, you know, negative notation his father was alcoholic he is also alcoholic or who runs in our family these kind of things if they tell it is it has a more negative connotation and it is likely to scare the prospective brides or bridegrooms away but uh, if you feel that you have to be honest but uh, you don't know how to tell it it is better to contact the consulting psychiatrist and take an appointment and make the psychiatrist tell the party also because they know how to tell it how to 
tell it in a way that they understand it and uh, see it as a medical disorder rather than uh, something with a uh, you know negative connotation and uh, uh, thinking that that is a very bad thing and they will never come out of it so when they tell they may use wrong words wrong analogies wrong examples and uh, they may worsen the picture than what it is usually uh, there so it is better to get the help of the treating therapist also here and convey the right message in a right and we used to follow that ma'am in in our in our college i remember we used to talk to a lot of uh, fiancés and even girlfriends and boyfriends whatever we used to explain them in our language so they used to get convinced and not one time but like couple of times they used to come see the process yeah ma'am coming to the actual part of the today's topic uh, obviously we all know professional help is the first first thing for uh, you know combating uh, addiction um after getting professional help map what are the different things that a patient can do to recognize and to combat addiction what are the different things tips uh, one, uh, they need to be aware of something called cravings or urgings so whenever these cravings comes it's an intense desire that uh, you know it pulls you towards uh, taking alcohol so the dependence pattern or the brain parts which are involved during addiction are so uh, hard work that it is very difficult to change so these cravings will naturally come these cravings are a natural part of the disease process or the recovery process so when these cravings come what are they supposed to do this they have to know for that they have to know they, they have to be aware of the thing called craving and they are they have to be ready for to you know um, face that craving whenever it occurs and when this craving occurs i hold uh, many of my patients to do some of the techniques like you know uh, either distract themselves uh, they come to know that they have a craving uh, intensely you are sitting in the middle of often 3 pm suddenly you want to have a, a bottle of beer because you are feeling thirsty and you have n number of excuses to restart the beer but what you can do at that time is distract yourself from that craving you first you have to acknowledge that you are having that craving and uh, you know consciously try to distract yourself maybe take a book or what you are reading or you know you start calling up friends or go and see your friends who are non alcoholics not the same group which you drink with you and uh, either if you are a movie buff start seeing a movie i bet by the end of the 3 hours or 1 and 1/2 hours that craving would have gone it doesn't last that long and uh, or either pick up a hobby or go somewhere outside and they say that uh, you know you have to talk it through you have to be honest if there is your mother sitting in next of the sofa what most of them do is they will never agree that they are having craving no 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 nothing why is your face like that no 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 nothing why are you going towards every no 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 nothing nothing they try to you know uh, suppress that and tell and lie to themselves uh, ask me so if there is somebody else in the room they are definitely going to lie about it so i you be honest about it you tell them on the face i think i am having a craving kind of thing for this beer i am thinking what to do you know immediately they come up with an idea let us play scrabble uh, let us play domino so you know let us do something so if you have that kind of support it diving passes off at the end of playing ludo or this will definitely come out of it but you have to be honest and able to talk it through Oh, so there is no shame in that. I always tell that you know it is better to uh, tell it openly and try to come out of it rather than uh, uh, end in a relapse later on. And also challenge and change your thoughts. Uh, when you are having those thoughts, you should first acknowledge it, then also try to change it. This is not the way I should be feeling about alcohol. Uh, alcohol I have left for good, and let me try to you know still resist it. That is what you have to do. And there is something called urge surfing also. That is if a wave comes. you go up on the wave and you surf over it till the wave comes down you know how a wave behaves the no wave stands on top of, on its own for a longer time it has to come down so urging uh, that's urge surfing or surfing the urge is a quality where first uh, you stay with the craving till it passes off that is what they say and uh, first you have to notice how you are feeling and uh, you have to focus on one part where you are particularly feeling a sensation see many people if you ask how did you know that you are having a craving they will tell you a particular sense of a smell or taste or something happened in my mouth some tingling sensation happened in my limbs some wooziness happened in my mind so let them uh, tell it out verbally let them focus on the area what is uh, what where the craving is ha- happening and let them stay with that and repeatedly focusing on this what is happening to me let me just see you stay with the craving for a quite a long time the craving does pass off 
and uh, mm. that is what i tell about you know earth surfing or these kind of things that surf over the wave of craving and it will go off and over long term this is just when cravings happen what i am telling if cravings don't happen still you are uh, afraid of relapse i tell that over long term you should have a that is you should build a meaningful and purposeful life without alcohol also like a life of sobriety should also be purposeful and meaningful and for that you have to involve in things which you enjoy and that should have relevance and meaning to you it might not be you know very remunerative or people may tell you kya kar rahe ho poet ghazal ga rahe ho kyun ga rahe ho ye kya fayda people will always tell that but it should have some meaning and relevance to you so things that you enjoy things that you find meaningful things that you find that others need it or you know you need it yourself so uh, when life is uh, filled with these kind of rewardful activities uh, then uh, there is a sense of purpose and then slowly addiction loses its appeal or it loses its hope that it has on that person uh, naturally so uh, the main purpose is you fill your the, with your life with many activities which are more rewarding more rewarding than all so you know the alcohol loses its sheen or power or whatever uh, you know the attraction what it had on the person that has to fade over time and, and for this i tell that pick up your old hobby or if you are not if you are been a hobbyless person pick up a new hobby anything yeah. would be good and uh, they say that even adopting a pet uh, mm. that has a lot of people spending time in nature you know hiking or you know cycling or take walk in the pure and sublime and that kind kind of calms your mind and you don't get involved in community work also you know uh, maybe yeah. with your group uh, in your faith that you volunteer and do something meaningful that immediately changes your life's perspective. specific and measurable goals not something which you can't achieve at all realistic goals if you keep naturally you will fail and again that will lead to negative emotions uh, stress and again you will relapse into alcohol so whenever you keep goals let it be specific let it be measurable let it be achievable also within your reach so if you keep such goals you will work towards that it takes time so it takes time away from your alcohol so your productivity also increases reward seeking the ways will be very different then and Uh, when you are doing this your health maintenance physical health maintenance is very important so a diet for that and you know regular exercise regular 6 to 8 hours of sleep that to nocturnal hours of sleep i have many people who have got out of substance but they are sleeping the whole day but not sleeping at night and they will get into other behavior addictions in order to overcome this some will become you know porn addicts or you know uh, gaming addicts or internet addiction or other some other behavior addiction we are going to gambling also sometimes sometimes shopping binges all these kind of things one behavior replacing another behavior i quit smoking but i got into gambling i quit gambling but i got into shopping these kind of things so we should be aware when we replace behavior so that those behaviors are productive so there is nothing called uh, in, uh, too much of hard work or you know uh, too much of voluntary service and all so there is nothing like that so things which are productive things which are constructive things which uh, you know give the reward in a very uh, sustained way and give for a long term that is where they have to focus and yes uh, uh, not reacting to everything is also they need to understand that that every stimuli which comes from the environment doesn't need your reaction you can choose not to respond to certain stimuli so i have many people who tell that you know uh, i was doing okay unless this wife started nagging me and she gives me a hard time and because of her i started drinking again uh, as soon as i come home uh, chak 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 nag 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 she eats my head what should i do i have to buy peace of mind that's why i went out and drank so i tell them you need not react to the uh, you know negative stimuli every stimuli that comes towards you once you practice this not reacting to all kind of stimuli you tend to calm your mind so once you calm your mind you don't need to you know go into other behaviors where you have to substantiate or rationalize your drinking behavior so all these kind of things are there it is not like a, uh, one what i tell will suit everybody or something or there is a panacea for everything and they also have to understand that no one treatment will work for everybody there is no addictions 
which can tell that you know we were treatment with 100% people we have seen have been de addicted and have remained abstinent so that is not going to happen that is where they have to realize that treatments will differ from one person to another so uh, relapse will also differ from one person to another and each person has to you know uh, work what works best for them yeah yeah also you mentioned in the beginning ma'am i want to repeat that is change in the friend circle is extremely important because a lot of people think that i will go but i will not drink. it's my friend's birthday but i will not drink or they will be like okay let me i'll only drink like one shot because it's it's his birthday but ma'am please tell them importance of that one shot that will push them back to where they started people will think that you know i have a great will power and doctor has told that half the thing he works on my will power we say that because yes half the thing does work on your will power but it you have to understand the other 3% does not so it is uh, even though addiction you have started taking alcohol voluntarily the rest of the part where addiction starts it is involuntary so the uh, brain responds in a way which is beyond your control that is why the loss of control uh, problem is there with alcohol so those people who think that one drink doesn't spoil me i know how how to stay in control these kind of things you have to understand that uh, moderate or just taking this can pass in you know, uh, the there is a very thin line between moderation and addiction so they have to understand that they are not like anybody else they are not like everybody else and there is some you know glamorization and comparison comes that you know my uncle lived up to 99 kushwan singh lived up to 99 and all he can hold his drink you can't hold your drink you went into attendance pattern you ended up center your life got spoiled because of that acknowledging reality sets in so you have to keep in touch with reality you have to see what defense mechanisms you go go into often you know maybe like denial i didn't drink at all these kind of lies they tell or minimization when they have drank a whole three quarter drink i just took 30 made up these kind of things or you know rationalization you know um, uh, if you are 60 years with the drinking why not uh, you know these kind of things are there always which uh, people will project on to us and there are people who have told me also you know you come from a certain lady you have never drank in your whole life that is why it is easy for you to tell you stay in my place uh, you work from morning to afternoon in a masonry and uh, let all your muscles ache then you will drink that is what they tell but i tell that that is still an excuse that is an excuse which you are justifying or rationalizing for uh, you to drink there are scores of other people who have not drank right of be doing hardships and all so it's not about one religion or it is not about a personal judgment or it is not about a personal opinion from a person when somebody comes to me and he is my patient and i am his doctor i am supposed to give him my medical opinion only yeah true the person i am not being judgment here but i am telling them what what it will amount mind if they continue drinking so it is not about me being prejudiced at all i may have friends who drink or uh, that doesn't mean that stop telling them to stop drinking so you know it amounts to that that you will have to tell that as a doctor or as a person in the de addiction center you are always supposed to tell them that abstinence a uh, total abstinence is the best if not they, they have to know that even starting a drink can lead to relapse and being in that chair being in the chair of a treating therapist you can never give permission for them from your uh, side telling that okay drink moderately let's see what happens because yeah. you know that the very thin line and they may cross over to the other side and treating then will become really difficult later on yeah yeah this one person one patient told me day before yesterday ma'am i asked i asked him you got directed so well by me what happened why did you go back to drinking he told me that i want to test my will power if i'll be able to like sustain it or not i said like why do you want to do that kind of adventure you know the risk taking is not required so excuses are like endless but i tell everybody to do this for yourself not for me i'm only your doctor right you only know me in this place outside this you don't know me i don't know you don't do it for your wife don't do it for your kids do it for yourself like self realization is the most important thing right ma'am one last question and we'll end the live what what can family do to help people fight addiction one is they need to be very supportive they 
need to understand the patient and the disorder they need to understand how alcohol yeah. affects them in how it uh, leads into addiction pattern how it is sometimes out of control for the ma'am i think you froze or uh, depression ma'am ma'am i think you're freezing uh, most probably ma'am ma'am yeah, no you froze you froze to me yeah you 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 are you're freezing you're freezing a little bit uh, okay can I you hear me now. yeah perfect perfect sorry uh, ma'am you have to repeat yeah identifying <laughs> comorbid problems is one thing which the family misses usually so they have to do that also and uh, uh, being very supportive understanding the patient understanding uh, the disease process as such and see to it that he gets his medication see to it that he goes through follow ups and not being too judgmental and uh, uh, controlling their expressed emotions maybe not being over critical and one more thing is of uh, codependence patterns like enabling their behavior um uh, these kind of things also has to come down from the uh, you know family members and sometimes when i have seen especially female alcoholics drinking they say that the husband drinks in hmm. uh, are you able to hear me yes ma'am uh, you said like female in- alcoholics you know you know they have to if family members also have a alcohol problem they have to restrain from doing the same kind of behavior when they are with the patient and uh, uh, if possible get a treatment for themselves also and yeah. uh, they have to understand uh, that uh, relapse is again a part of the disease and not a part of treatment failure not a part of failure on the individual's part and be as supportive as they can and uh, if possible treat it as like a physical disorder if if their own uh, patient had diabetes and it was chronic and not uh, glucose is not coming under control would they have been so critical and judgmental about the patient they have to ask this simple question like you know or you know hypertension or diabetes would they have been so critical oh is he why is his glucose getting up and down this fellow is this fellow nobody says that you know but with alcohol they always say that you know so we need to you know kind of somewhere uh, with the analogy between physical and uh, mental disorders has to come and they have to understand that it is a part of the disease and uh, yes sometimes it's very uh, frustrating and it's very uh, they the patients seem very ungrateful towards the caregivers and all but uh, if there is uh, some amount of uh, love and uh, care left in the family i think they should uh, really put their effort in that direction and uh, try to give that benefit of doubt to the patient they will change eventually they will change it will happen slowly but uh, slowly and steadily but it might not happen as quickly as they expect but they should be able to give that uh, benefit of doubt to the patient and treat them uh, with respect with care with concern and i have seen many people turn over also over the long term yeah 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 i i i think i think uh, that's about it ma'am i think we covered pretty much everything uh, how simple things can make such a big impact in someone's life and people around as well addiction plays a big role also the people who think this is only applicable to alcohol no ma'am used example of alcohol it is for any substance use disorders so it's the same thing don't think for nicotine it's something else for cannabis it's something else no so obviously that's what i wanted to tell ma'am thank you so much at such short notice you installed instagram and like we did we did it like my daughter you know why like i'm going now don't tell me anything i will do something so i thought uh, learn something from my student <laughs> thank you so much ma'am this has been wonderful all the it's great to see you again after kolkata uh we will catch up soon ma'am hopefully after covid in some conference or i am planning to make a trip to mangalore someone is saying thank you aruna ma'am and dr charan yes thank you so much for listening uh, swanupriya uh, ma'am th- thank you have a good night i'll save the live if any of your patients want to see they can always come and see surely surely thank you for having me here bye, bye. take care stay safe ma'am bye
uh, that brings us to the obviously end of today's session i hope um you all understood the importance of family support and a professional help in uh, in combating addiction and also how to identify craving because cravings are the most strongest thing one example i tell all my patients about craving is it's like it's like hunger let's just say um you know you're very hungry it's 2 o'clock you're still stuck in meeting you're extremely hungry extremely hungry hold it little while you know just just stay in there for a little long let's just say 2 o'clock you're very hungry 3 o'clock you won't be your hunger dies you won't feel like eating even if you have a chance to craving exactly works on the same principle it comes like a wave and goes what my mom was telling is the same thing wave surfing and things like that it's the same thing so stay with the craving and let it die down or uh, if it's especially alcohol just fill your stomach with something you know trick your brain to believe that you know something you're drinking something that's another way to uh, i tell my patient just go drink a full bottle of water your stomach feels full and craving will subside for a little bit postponing craving also is a wonderful thing where you know like let's just say you're dieting you're trying to lose weight and you you're not able to control your craving to eat something what do you tell yourself okay little later little later little later little later and push it off to the end of the day and just kick it out so that's these are simple things that you can do um again i'm emphasizing family plays a big role i know it's very easy for us to say than done uh, people with uh, alcohol dependent person in the family they go through a lot of problems uh, sometimes they themselves need uh, support so if you need support go go get go get support go see a doctor um because caregivers grief uh, caregivers burden caregivers distress are real medical things um that needs to be dealt with before they turn into clinical depression and they hit the roof um so i hope all of you understood what we are trying to um speak today uh, also super excited to have uh, aruna ma'am she is my professor so it's it's great to uh, you know interact with the professor through any medium um thank you so much so um uh tune in next wednesday we're doing a talk about smoking or uh, nicotine tobacco all of that by a pulmonologist i hope all of you are staying safe uh, take care and good night